Hi, welcome to my inquiry presentation. My name is Zari Mohammed, and I am a second year fellow at John Burroughs School in the History Department. So to understand my inquiry question and how I got there, it's important to understand where I've been. Um, I am from Memphis, Tennessee. I grew up as a black woman and the daughter of an educator. And I think for my inquiry question particularly, um, I reflected a lot on my first year teaching at Burroughs specifically. So for context, I was thrust into this course of African-American studies, um, fresh out of college, got hired at Burroughs, joined the Penn program, all that good stuff. Um, and this is a class that has existed in some iteration for 30 years. And so has been taught by two people for decades before me. Um, and I come in as a fellow and I'm taking over this course. Um, the way that Burroughs utilizes this class is that um, they prioritize, it's a senior elective, they prioritize African-American or black seniors to take the class above anyone else. So they always get first preference if they wanna take the course too. So what that has meant is that in both years, I have had majority black students in that class. And during my first year teaching this class at Burroughs, I felt that my students were bringing me a lot of issues of what they've experienced at Burroughs in terms of race problems. And I felt like there was also times in which they didn't take me seriously as a teacher because I was so young. I am also um, the only black history teacher in the department. So throughout that time, I kind of um, came away from my first year with three main questions. So how do I care for the students of color at Burroughs in terms of dealing with their challenges race-wise? How do I intend to teach students about the importance of African-American studies in their own lives? Essentially, how do I get them to take the subject seriously? They all came in with the assumption that this course would be an easy A. And how do, what do I see as the benefits and challenges of my own positionality at, at Burroughs, coming in as a fellow and as a Black woman, um, and the challenges that, that automatically imposes onto my own lives? And how do I see that as a benefit in my classroom in relating to these high school seniors? So all of this led me to my inquiry question, which is how can I help my students understand themselves and cultivate critical empathy through African American studies? So um, let's just go ahead and break that down. So as an aside, this is the literature that I use for this project. This is the literature map, the visual of it. But I'm going to talk about the literature in um, in some of the main chunks of my my inquiry question to begin with. So I am directly... Um, my definition of understanding themselves or understanding comes from identity. And I got this idea through um, Not Light But Fire, Matt Kay. So he says, just as fire rarely passes through an environment without acting upon it, so too should our world be impacted by our students' race conversations. And I think those conversations around race, their own individual races, helps them understand the world at large and systems of oppression. And so ultimately, when we're talking about understanding themselves, they're understanding themselves in all of their identities, not just their race conversations, but those race conversations remain central in the class of African-American studies. I'm defining critical empathy in the way that Nicole Mira defines critical empathy in her book, Educated for Empathy. Um, in the second part of this quote, she says, it is about imaginative, imaginatively embodying the lives of our fellow citizens while keeping in mind the social forces that differentiate our experiences as we make decisions about our shared public's future. And so the way that I chose to distill that down for my own individual class is, are they able to walk in someone else's shoes and feel not as the person is, not their identity, but how the person is being perceived by the world around them, how society is impacting that person's interactions with the world. Um, so essentially, this is also a case study on privilege in the way that I was using it for my senior elective course. And from the rest of my literature, I walked away with three major values, one being the value of race-based conversations. So once again, going back to Matt Kay, the value of centering those conversations, um, the value of centering individual experiences. So speaking from the I perspective, that became important for the critical reflection, which I'll explain later for my students, and the value of empathy overall, and how that um, creates a more democratic society in speaking across differences. So these are some of my data collection tools that I utilize. Um, I did a lot of journal entries, discussion posts, class recordings, teacher journal, which was sometimes just transcribed um, transcriptions from classes that I recorded, or sometimes my own reflections and graded assessments, um, which I didn't anticipate using to begin with, but felt the more that I um, the more that I was looking at the data that that was actually places where they were most authentically engaging in the uh, the questions that I was asking of them. <laughs> 
And I feel like all of these data um, sources yielded different results. Notably, I think the online private journals were extremely helpful because they were completely ungraded and private. No one saw them but me. Um, and so students did not have to do them if they did not want to, if they did not feel comfortable. And there was no other, there was no alternative assessment or um, incentive for them to engage with some of the questions I would be asked. So some of the questions I would ask in those is, how does your identity impact your view on this topic? What is your gender identity? How does it relate to what we're reading about? Um, and I chose to sort my data in four major buckets. So we have critical reflection, critical empathy, agency, and joy. Critical reflection, I was measuring as their ability to speak from the I perspective and then utilize that to talk about a system around them. Um, so for example, um, someone saying, as a, as a Black American, I understand slavery, the legacy of slavery in the prison industrial complex. Um, I was measuring critical empathy through phrases such as, I can understand how this person says, or I can, I get what you're saying. Um, I understand how they might feel that way. Um, because of the time period, this makes a lot of sense. So ways in which they are talking about someone's identities, aspects of their identity, and how they um, impact their views and stances on the world and how the world perceives them. Agency and joy were important to me because I feel like in the study of African American studies, especially when we talk about critical reflection and critical empathy, those conversations often center around pain and suffering. Suffering, and I think in reminding my students through the lessoning, the lesson planning that we did, of the agency, joy, and ultimately resistance of black historical um, actors, it also allowed them to engage in a level of critical empathy that wasn't just I feel bad for this person, but rather I understand exactly. Um, why they acted in the way that they did. And um, I can see where that person might come from in this regard. And it also gave them options to um, models to critically reflect on their own agency and joy in their classroom and life at large. So if we're talking about some of the teacher moves that I utilized for this project, um, there's three major ones. So the first one is centering lived experiences. So when studying systems of power, rather than studying the systems at large and not use, um, utilizing personal information, we would study narratives. So for example, instead of studying the transatlantic slave trade and just going over the basics and how many people died and what the conditions were, we read firsthand accounts of that too. And so these are some questions I would ask um, in trying to center lived experiences through our conversation. So when we read narratives, um, I would say, what is this person feeling and why? What are some of the major points they're making? How might their identity impact their outlooks? Another thing that I try to do is validate the import the importance of the topic through assessment. So in their assessment, I would always have a question that allowed them to reflect on their own identity or the identity of someone else and how that ultimately impacted their view or someone else's view on the world. So here are some examples of um, questions I took pulled from their assessment. So how does studying the institution of slavery through the eyes of the enslaved person reshape the stereotypical narrative of slavery? And I felt like this was important, notably because my first year, I think that a lot of my students struggled with taking African-American studies as a course seriously. They didn't see the academic value in the course. And so validating the importance of this work through what I was asking them on assessment allowed them to also reinforce the idea in their own heads that this was a valid academic field. I also used a lot of visuals and emotionality. So I would show them pictures, images of different things to evoke emotions, notably because, um, or because of the fact that I read in um, Dewey's book um, that emotions are the reflex of actions. And so they're responding um, subconsciously in a way that they might not want to to the actions of someone else. So my two major findings have to do with connections and empathy. One, I felt like by centering their lived experiences, my students were able to understand the value of African-American studies in their individual lives. So I pulled some evidence for that. This is an example of a student reflecting in a discussion post on slavery. So they're starting it with personally as a mixed race person, so immediately jumping into their own identity um, and ultimately writing, slavery created a forever hostile relationship between whites and black people because um, and so they begin that conversation with reflecting on their identity and using it to talk about a system and a legacy at large. Here are two more examples that I felt like students were utilizing critical reflection and developing those connections between their own lives and systems. 
Um, and so this first example was, is a student talking about reshaping the narrative of slavery, so how they learned about it. I liked how they used words such as truly how unsanitary, unsanitary dehumanizing, so how it unearthed something new that they hadn't learned about. This last example is extremely interesting to me because this is an example of a student reflecting without prompting. Um, the question for this final actually was to essentially trace the history from the 13th Amendment to the prison industrial complex. I didn't ask them for any reflective part for this particular question, yet the student was so used to doing that in all the other prompts that naturally when it came time for them to talk about super predators, they immediately began talking about the prison industrial uh, pipeline within their own community um, that they had seen and lived through in their own lives. So once again, reflecting on systems at large and then utilizing that in their own individual lives and experiences. The second major finding I had had to do with critical empathy. Um, I felt like there were times in which my students were acceptance are acceptive of the idea of critical empathy and also resistant to it. Um, an example of acceptance of critical empathy was in our conversations about um, Du Bois and Washington. Last year, my students really struggled with um, empathizing with Washington and his arguments, and they began personal attacks on his character. Whereas here, um, the way that I went about framing this debate was each day I would write down their identity factors on the board for both Washington and Du Bois. And before we actually talked about any of the content of the ideology, we would sit there for five minutes and talk about their identities. And so what that ended up doing is when it was time to ask questions such as, who is right? Do we agree or disagree? Many of them, even though still disagreeing with Washington, would say things such as, I can understand how he is saying what he is saying based on his upbringing. I, um, they understand that in the time immediately after Reconstruction, Washington is existing in the time period that he is in. So they are able to reflect on Washington's identity, empathize with it, and yet still disagree with it in a way, right? Understanding that they come from a position that they do not fully understand, but understand how he might be perceived by the world. An area where I felt like they were resistant to critical empathy was notably when it came to class. So we had a whole conversation on reparations and everyone in the room was in agreement that Black Americans deserved some form of reparations. However, only one student argued for monetary reparations, primarily because every other student had said and noted that they felt like Black Americans, notably lower class Black Americans, would not handle money in a way that would be substantial for the Black community. And so there's these stereotypes that they were leaning into on these tropes of Black Americans, their use of money, and lower class. And I think what was also notable here is that many students in my classroom actually aren't um, lower socioeconomic status. And the only student who spoke up in support of money did come from so, um, a lower so socioeconomic background. And so I think that because class is also not a perceivable identity and because Burroughs is a school that has the dominant class being not the dominant class of society, it um, allowed some pushback on how they were viewing resistance and empathy. Um, here's some of my major implications. I think throughout this project, I realized that critical reflection is so key for conversations on privilege. And I think that that's why it was notably lacking in the class conversations because there wasn't reflection on their own identities. I don't think I made that connection explicit. Um, and I think that critical empathy can and will lead to more nuanced conversations across differences, as we saw in the debate between Washington and Du Bois and how they interacted with that. So they were able to still disagree in a way that was empathetic and genuine, as opposed to attacking Washington and misrepresenting his ideology. Um, and ultimately, going back to the whole notion of agency and joy, I felt like my students did a good job with that as well. And it further proves that African-American studies doesn't actually have to censor pain and suffering to be impactful. Um, Going back to what I said earlier, I wonder how this same lesson would look in a course that is not entirely Black, because I still feel as though um, it is valuable to understand yourself through African American studies and develop critical empathy. I wonder what that looks like when there isn't one common identity in the room. I am also wondering how I can um, facilitate more empathetic and nuanced conversations around class, and also how I can expand this work, work to the di diaspora context. So how does this look like to talk about global struggles of Black people in, um, in the world as opposed to solely the United States? And that is my presentation, and thank you.